there are 850 million malnourished people in the world today. In future decades, that number could increase as the climate changes and the population expands from 6.6 .6 to 9 billion by 2050. Global food supplies are not equally distributed and food prices are rising. A new report, the International Assessment of Agricultural Science and Technology, argues that together these factors pose a major global challenge. A challenge which requires a global response, now. Business as usual will mean that we will not be able to feed the world. Business as usual means we will continue to degrade the environment. Business as usual means that we will not ever solve the problems of poverty and hunger. These Philippine shrimp fishermen are at the sharp end of the problem. Over the last 30 years, their catch has been falling due to unregulated global overfishing. In Kalbayog City, they rely on fish for more than half of their protein. Many are too poor to buy additional food for their families. Of course, poverty isn't new. In the 1960s and 70s, the Green Revolution boosted yields with synthetic fertilizers and pesticides. But gains came with high costs to the environment, human health and social equity. This new report looks not only at production, but at the environment and social issues too. Robert Watson is the director of the report. I think some of our conclusions on trade are likely to be controversial and not everyone will agree with them. Some of our findings on agrochemicals or elements of biotechnology will not necessarily have agreement by everybody. Many in the public and private sector believe that Africa's future depends on biotechnology. Some crops can be bred or genetically engineered to better resist disease or drought, valuable traits in a warming climate. But we still don't know how GMOs will alter biodiversity, ecosystem function or affect human health. We do know corporate control of seeds can undermine the livelihoods of small-scale farmers. Will emphasis on high-cost research come at the expense of needed low-cost solutions? Such as techniques used by farmers in Honduras, Central America. Following Hurricane Mitch in 1998, farmers in the Lampira region managed to feed the rest of the country. They were using zero tillage, a traditional practice which helps prevent mudslides. Over 400 experts from a variety of disciplines have surveyed agricultural knowledge from around the world, starting with proven methods like zero tillage. Report co-chair Judy Wakungu explains this collaborative approach. Because more and more in a, in a rapidly changing world, we need um, multiple knowledge uh, for different situations. So increasingly, um, policymakers are looking towards scientists and engineers and technologists, all the variety of uh, disciplines that contribute to agriculture to make decisions. What our document argument argues for is putting more emphasis on those that don't have the luxury of irrigation. Those areas where people are too poor to afford all of the inputs, the better seeds, the inputs such as fertilizers and some of the pesticides. Many poor farmers rely on cash crops like cassava, but a crop disease or market crash can leave them with nothing. Some farmers in Kali Hills, India, have returned to traditional millets. Growing them alongside cassava spreads the risk and diversifies their diets. Plus, it provides additional income. These farmers are supplying a new, buoyant market in drinks made from millet. But, the report cautions, these opportunities depend on governments, the private sector and NGOs working together with poor farmers, especially in the face of rising food prices. If you look at all of the inputs that are needed in agriculture, and given the high uh, level of oil prices now, it has made agriculture extremely expensive. Secondly, there's the controversial issue of biofuels. So the report does deal with that, but there is some controversy as to how to move forward. We're already seeing private sector work with governments, work with the NGOs, work with poor people, but there's still a long way to go, basically. 
Back in the Philippines, the government is rolling out the use of new nets. The nets could help address the problem of overfishing because they let the juvenile fish escape. The authors of the report point to the sharing of solutions like this as the way forward. What I do hope is that the debate uh, generates a policy, a policy guide that um, countries and international bodies uh, can follow uh, to steer agriculture in a positive way over the next 50 years.